laughter is a universal part of the human vocabulary and that people of uh, all races and all cultures and throughout history have laughed in pretty much the same way. Which is very curious business because we don't consciously decide to do it. Okay, Elmo's vibrating. We have the illusion that laughter is a choice. You know, we speak laughter as we speak any other word. But we don't speak ha-ha when we laugh. It's an involuntary action. We gather together with other people and laugh. We're engaging in the same kinds of behavior. Why is that? In our study of chimpanzees, if you tickle a chimpanzee and record their laughter, it's this in and out labored breathing which means what I'm about to do is play. I'm not attacking it. So the chimpanzee version is an in and out sound. <laughs> in humans, it has been transformed into a parsed exhalation. Ha ha ha, just as I'm speaking to you now. So your typical laugh would be <laughs> Its basic structure is a kind of pulsative pattern whereby you have a short exhalation that lasts about a fifteenth of a second that repeats about every fifth second. Give you another one. <laughs> We're neurologically programmed to laugh in a particular way. In fact, it's difficult to laugh in other than that way. For example, if we're trying to laugh at a faster than usual rate, <laughs> where you have laughs that have a very short ha sound instead of <laughs> if you had really short ha sounds like ha, 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 doesn't sound like laughter anymore. I've been studying laughter about 20 years. When I started this work, I wanted to be more lab based. We'd bring people into the lab, getting them to laugh by showing them comedy videos, and then doing acoustic analyses of these sounds, and then analyzing how the brain produces these sounds, and so on. But what I found was, is you could play some of the world's funniest comedy videos to people in the lab, and they're not going to laugh much. What started out as being a, a tactical approach, a good way to get insights into human behavior, uh, was making me a social scientist. When you look at uh, behaving humans, you have to really uh, look at social behavior. It's always nice to be able to get out of a windowless laboratory and see what other members of our species are doing. You know, breakthroughs in science come from studying things that are simple and easily described. In fact, I have a name for it. I call it sidewalk neuroscience. <coughs> with pencil and paper and maybe a stopwatch if you want to get fancy, you can go out and look at what people do and learn some fundamental things about human behavior. So we're interested in what's said before the laughter occurs and who's laughing, the speaker or the audience. So we found that social laughter is 30 times more frequent than solitary laughter. And the discovery here was basically, it was the relationship between individuals was causing the laughter not jokes. <laughs> Sometimes I'll come up to people in public places and ask them about uh, these kind of things. What does she do that's, that's so funny? There, there she's I doing it again. Is. That's what she does. <laughs> it's like she just bubbles. It's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like she's trying to contain it, but not really containing it. Yeah. So it just comes out. Yeah. yeah it's she didn't plan it. It's just happening. Huh? Mm -hmm. In our feel-good, be-happy society, we always associate laughter with positive things, forgetting that laughter also has a dark side. It's great uh, laughing with friends, family, lovers, uh, but it can be painful or even dangerous if you're laughing at someone or they're laughing at you. In fact, the power and danger of laughter was something that was a central a reason for the interest of ancients, uh, such as Plato and Aristotle. Now, they weren't interested in how to perform better stand-up. They wanted to learn about laughter and humor uh, to control it, because they were aware that laughter could lead to the disrespect for authority and the overthrow of the state. 
Everyone thinks that we're rational beings and total conscious control of our behavior, but that's not true when we laugh. We're talking about very primal, powerful things uh, in human behavior. At the simplest level, we found that when you laugh, when you hear other people laugh, this indicates you have a neurological program to repeat certain kind of things that happen in your presence. But that's extraordinary. I think it's more than just a curiosity. It means that you have inherited a brain that causes you to imitate certain things that you see. I think this is telling you that you're dealing with something that's powerful, that's important, it's also unappreciated. <laughs> the study of laughter and its stimulus humor have just begun. 